Welcome to Knockhill Racing Circuit for the first round of the 2015 Scottish 600 Superstock Championship. This is one of the most competitive classes that we have in Scotland and it always gives us some exciting close racing. Let's head down to the Holden Bay for the first race of the day. The first race of the 2015 season is about to begin and it's a Superstock 600 class and a great entry, a good field of machines and familiar faces on the front row. The number 49 machine, Paul McLung, again a regular last year, a race winner in this class. Liam Shellcock, Shellcock close to winning all the time in this class as well. But the new face on the front row and the man who won twice yesterday on his debut in this class is Lewis Rollo and we're going to have a quick chat with Lewis. Lewis, sorry to interrupt, I can see you going through your pre-race rituals that we've become used to there with your visualising and everything. It's an unusual uh, technique, but it seems to work because yesterday, two wins on your debut in the class. Yeah, well, um, yesterday I um, struggled at the start to kind of get switched on at the start of the race, but um, we still managed to fight for the win and I had a brilliant battle with Paul and Liam. Um, in both races and we managed to win both the races and hoping to do the same today but um, I think I just need to concentrate, get switched on at the start of the race and try and make a gap and keep the gap throughout the race but um, we were doing quick lap times yesterday and um, all three of us want to improve our times today and get quicker but I think there's going to be another couple of boys who's going to join the pack and give us a wee battle today so should be good. It's really impressive, not only have you stepped up from the Super Twin class onto a more powerful machinery, but also really competitive Paul and Liam, these guys are really, really quick. It's almost a British Championship level pace at the front of this and you're straight in there, straight winning straight away. Did you expect that? Well, um, we were hoping to be up the front and obviously um, be fighting for podiums, but we never thought we'd be up here uh, going for the win and winning our first two races, putting the bike on pole position and everything, and especially against Liam who races at BSB and then Paul who's raced a couple of years in the Scottish and done the odd BSB as well. So um, now we're happy with where we are and as we progress and I start to get used to the bike more and get um, used to the way it works and handles, I think we can improve a lot more and hopefully get a lot better. Good luck. Thank you. There we go. This is race number one. I'll hand it to Dennis and Duncan and they'll take us through the action. Thank you very much, Joe Tanner, the Skinner Motorcycles. Super Stock 600, Dennis, this is going to be a crack. I mean, Lewis Rollo, Liam Shellcock and Paul McClung returning. Paul McClung. Also, Callum Gregor, Christopher Duncan and Callum Patterson there on the second row of the grid for this one from Ewan Gray and Angus Mearns. Beautiful Ooh, blue yeah. skies as well again for these guys. Is that not just a treat looking at that? I'm not talking about Paul McClung, I'm talking about the sky. Nice sunny conditions. It's not too blustery now as well. The wind's died down a lot, so uh, we're going to have a, a cracking race here. Uh, as we look at the guys back on the grid there, Lewis Rollo on the Sherlaws, um, Sherlaws of Aberdeen bike, Sherlaws motorcycles, they've been around motorsport, motorbike racing in Scotland for a long, long time now, all eyes on the Beatsons Belt and Supply Bridge, the revs rise, red lights are on, red lights are off and away we go and it's a cracking start from everybody, nobody bogs it down and who's going to get the whole shot down towards the first corner, is it going to be McClung or Rollo, Rollo goes across the front of Paul McClung and takes the lead in a very, very brave move as they go down through the lessons. but McClung goes back up the inside into Scotsman again, Rollo cuts straight across the nose and a very, very aggressive riding at the start of this race but nice and clean as we go on board over the top of the Arnold Clark chicane, Lewis Rollo leads on the Kawasaki from the Yamaha of Paul McClung and the triumph of Liam Shellcock. Yeah, the trolley bay supported machine there in third place and you've got to say Liam Shellcock is a man that's done the most track time of any of these guys at the sharp end. He's been contesting the National Superstock Championship at the British Superbike meetings. He's just fresh back from a test at Alton Park and he's looking menacing. We saw how aggressive he was. Look at look that. Look at Lewis Rollo going into the hairpin then. I was about to say the camera mount must be a little bit loose because it doesn't look <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that vibratory and aggressive but uh, it could well be just the way he's riding at the moment. Peter Duncan takes us out of the hairpin up the main street aboard his Triumph 675 passing the start lane now but we go back to the front and Lewis Rollo and look at the aggressive style of this young man and the, the camera is bouncing about a fair bit but into the hairpin that first time Dennis he had that thing skate about and backing it in looking there. Uh, Looking very stylish as he styles up. Remember, he's still a young lad, isn't he? He's only 15 years yeah. old. He's not 16 until later on in the year. The first time he can actually race that bike at the uh, British Superbike Championship will be when they come here for the Knock Hill round at the beginning of July. So we look forward to seeing him out for that one. And uh, he's definitely looking menacing. Good to see Paul McClung back in this class, Duncan. 
He's doing a good job out there and getting back into the swing of things. This is a, a machine he's only just recently picked up uh, before the meeting. Yeah, it's an ex-Mark coming bike, and we're, we're big fans of Paul McClung in this commentary box, but right now he's under a lot of pressure from Liam Shelcock and Lewis Rollo just starting to escape at the front here on that number eight Shuttle's motorcycle. Looking in fourth place, Callum Grigger battling with Chris Duncan, the, the teammate of Lewis Rollo. So... Chris Duncan's got pretty fast teammates all around. Darren Ross in the big class and Lewis Rule in this class. Yeah, I'm just uh, we've been impressed with young Callum as well. He's on the, the Kodi uh, Kawasaki supported machine. Uh, he's getting faster and faster all the time, but he just doesn't get away at the start to run with these guys. I believe if he makes a start, Duncan, he's going to be uh, he'll be able to tag himself along and make a few oh, passes. Shellcock yeah. Shellcock was up the inside at Clark Corner and a nice smooth calculated overtake by Liam Shellcock it was pretty pretty clean I was impressed with that one yeah on board with Lewis Rollo heading towards the hairpin and look at the battle still on for second place McClung's wanting that second place back he comes back up the inside Liam Shellcock but Shellcock says no as we go back on with the uh, young Lewis as he kind of heads towards an apex in some sort of fashion pretty much out of control but very very fast I mean, uh, Lewis oh Sonny's down there that's Callum Patterson Dennis yep Callum Patterson the 1-2-1 one, one bike on it say Callum on his feet straight away but that's a bit of a loss yeah unfortunately Callum's been getting stronger and stronger as well he, you know he, at one point a couple of years ago Duncan he was lapping around yeah. here in the low 51s and, and faster than what the guys did at the British Super Bike Championship round I do know that he's got uh, a stock engine in that bike completely stock so there's nothing being changed it's basically come out of road bike so you, you can do a little bit of maintenance to these things like blue, blueprint and whatever else can you yeah, obviously. Oh, the, the super Shellcock class, again. Yeah. That seems to be his move, and this time Lewis Rollo is so aggressive when he sees a front wheel alongside him. He's not, he's not shy just to lean that shoulder on somebody's bike. Yeah, I mean Lewis Rollo. He's come from the, the Mini Twins, Duncan, and there was nobody to challenge him. We saw him here in the in the one two fives as well. He, oh, he's, Dennis! He's, he's trying hard. He's obviously used a bit of back brake, but he makes well, the going. apex. Yep, yeah, but he's uh, he's never really had any competition before. And we've always seen him. He, he goes around. He does the British Championship rounds now and again as well. Uh, and that's where he was, he was obviously getting his extra speed from. But coming here, straight onto the 600, we're, we're impressed with his performance. And, and you guys, see, you've got to remember, 15 years of age, <laughs> and he's out there riding a, as, as good and aggressive as this. And we saw Jody Chalk just yeah. passing through the yeah. screen there. The one of the impressive things of Lewis Rollo is he can do the lap times throughout the course of the race, but he can do them from the second lap of the race. Bang, straight away. He gets his, gets his start then, straight away, it's in the quick lap times. But Shellcock's quick through that chicane, and his favourite overtaking place is Clark. But He's going to have to have a big, big bit of, big he's lunge, as you say there. He still manages to get the bike turned and exited out of Clark Con on the run down the hairpin, does uh, Liam Shelcott. So, really impressed with uh, how he's getting through that part of the track. And that's obviously suited maybe to the triumph and the way the power is with that respective bike. But as it comes out of the hairpin, he just loses that first initial drive yeah. uh, that you see. So, from this point onwards, he maybe loses, what, half a bike length to a bike length. But then he, it's all equal. Even Stevens has come up over the top. But the chicane area looks like where the, the triumph, maybe the, the peak torque of the power is and he drives out and manages to get a run on young Lewis ahead of him. McClung just slipping off the back of these two at the front who are setting a, a very, very fast pace, to tell the truth. Everybody's round about the same, but Paul's just starting to let these guys just edge away as we go up towards the Arnold Clark chicane. Use a lot of care going through there. Paul McClung's going to completely film in and pull a blinder out here. Now, Lewis Roller was a bit shy through the chicane that time, and uh, well, Liam Shellcock tries, but uh, if anything, thinks better off it straight away and ducks back in behind him and tries to get a good drive round towards the airport. There's Peter Duncan again, 72, as we pick back up with the leaders. McClung, yep, yeah, he's, uh, he's caught back up on this lap very easily, and that's the most uh, in control we've seen Lewis Rollo entering the hairpin. Didn't want to work those tyres too hard, does he, then? No, and I believe he's just... Uh, we had a, had a word of Alan McIntosh earlier on. He's just getting used to the bike, and, and obviously he's never really had any kind of power underneath him before. He's not used to the you know the bike starting to slide and move about, and that's a feeling he's got to get used to. He looks like he's, he's adapting to it really well. Yes. But he's got to remember the bike's never going to be stable. It's never going to be always in line. There's got to be some compromises you've got to make. And sometimes it feels like the bike and the suspension's moving around a bit with the Pirelli tyres that have gone because the, the side walls and the carcass of the tyre is really soft and the tyre is acting part of, as, as part of the suspension as well, so that's a feeling he's got to get used to. And changing around the pressures makes a big difference with these things. Good bit of insight from Dennis about how the tyres actually work. I just put air in and pump them up. Hopefully put warmers on them if I go out there, but if not, I just take my time. So round towards the hairpin, we see the three are back together at the front now. They're all closed up as Lewis heads for the apex. He's, he's got a really kind of defensive fast line in there. He turns in quite early and kind of scrubs off the speed as he's still trail breaking towards that apex. Even for, for us, you know, I've been racing a long time, Duncan, and likewise with yourself. When we were watching Lewis yesterday from the, the commentary tower, his line on the, on the last lap in the hairpin every time I was actually really impressed with it. I actually mm -hmm. probably learned something by watching young Lewis Rollo yesterday 
Uh, and you think he's only 15 years of age, so that's uh, something impressive to Look at this, from. this back mark is with to learn something as Lewis Rollo goes around the outside and that was so close, this shell could get through, yes, Paul McClung has to kind of back it up on the brakes and that was an extremely brave move yeah. from the first two. K Chris Eastwood will be thinking, what is going on? Because what was he, that? He's getting past left, right and centre there at that particular point of the circuit, but uh, again, you know, he, the first time we've done anything about it is... Uh, once they come through, there's no blue flags for these guys to, to pre-warn them of any fast uh, traffic approaching them. Backing it in towards the hairpin a little bit, Lewis Rollo there gets back to his apex, picks it up and goes, got another man ahead of him here, which he wants to get a good run up the main straight. He should dispatch this man before they get to the braking zone off Duffy's dip, first corner, look from the left hand side, there you go. That was uh, quite easily done, and the next bike as well. Uh, as they go through, oh dear, round the outside, as they go through, yes. that's a brave manoeuvre, maybe not the best manoeuvre, but the bravest manoeuvre, Shellcock's really kept with them there then. Yeah, Paul Mackey was the guy that was going past, also Michael Hoskinson, uh, so those are the two guys that have just gone a lap down, but you've got to say, impressive the way the, the aggression is to get past him, but also Shellcock looked like he maybe got a bit of an advantage as he got, he lost out initially, but he got an advantage um, as he came through Lewis towards Rolo, Scotsman. Lewis Rollo is... Uh, fighting a very narrow line here he's got to watch what he's doing he's just taking liberties with his back markers going around outside them he's he's got away with it this time but one of these times it might end up biting him but look at the gap he's managed to get over him uh, Shellcock on this lap quickly back to Michael Hoskis and uh, good guy uh, if his dad used to be one of my sponsors Mark so hi Mark hope you're listening hope you're enjoying it join us after the break and we'll get the conclusion of this race So, welcome back after that quick commercial break there. We pick up Lewis Rollo going through Duffy's dip here, followed by Liam Shellcock. And those two have managed to put a little bit of time between themselves and Paul McClung. And I'm just saying a little bit because it's not a great deal down through Butchers and over the top of the chicane. Now, this is where a bit of racecraft comes into it. Can Liam Shellcock, will he go for the win, Dennis? Or will Lewis Rollo takes a very strange <laughs> line there? Or will he try and just think, I get a few points to the board here? I think he's definitely going for the win. Last lap round was the fastest lap of the race for Liam Shellcock, a 52-0-9-1. Liam Shellcock, also a different man. This, this time last year, he'd have thrown that thing up the road, Dennis, doing these kind of speeds. As he, he's go, trying, going to try and go around the outside of Lewis Rollo here. Lewis, very, very defensive on the way in to the hairpin and blasting up towards the checker flag is going to be a win for Lewis Rollo Liam Shellcock all over the back of him at the flag but Lewis Rollo takes a very well deserved win second place for Liam Shellcock and third place for the returning Paul McClung it looks like we're going to get uh, Callum Greger across the line in fourth place we didn't see him and Christopher Duncan comes home for a well deserved fifth on the Shirlos Kawasaki yeah the gap from there 0 0.080 at the line but Ewan Gray across the line in sixth place ahead of Jody Chalk Angus Mearns Peter Duncan and Kyle Duncan round out the top 10. Then we had David Jackson and Paul Mackey, but back down to Joe Tanner in the pit lane. Liam, a good start to the day, uh, some fantastic weather conditions and a good second place to kick things off. Yeah, it was great weather actually. Um, just struggling to beat Lewis, he's a really feisty little rider, so I've still got a bit of work to do to get past him. But the gap's not huge, it's not like he's driving away from you, it's just that tiny, tiny little bit that he seems to have. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's stronger than me into the last corner, and uh, I'm just suffering on Grunt coming out of the hairpin, so I think it's going to be really hard to try and beat him out of that last corner on a close race. I don't want to make an issue out of it like we did last year, but the starts, um, two great starts yesterday, I was told, I watched that one. It was okay. Uh, you didn't go backwards that much. No, the, the, the two starts yesterday, I was leading the first lap, uh, or first into the first corner from the second row. Today, I was mediocre, but it wasn't a disaster anyway. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's see a win today. Yeah, I'll stay in. Thanks. Cheers. Lewis, well done. It would have taken a brave man to bet against you after your performance yesterday. Unbelievable debut in this class. Yeah, well, starting off yesterday with a pole position and then two wins yesterday and we were delighted with that and we were like, how, like, you can't start a season any better than that and then um, today we've got another win in the first race and um, another brilliant battle against Liam and Paul and really close again and um, I think it'll be like that the rest of the day so just elbows out and we'll see what happens. I'm kind of glad you won't be as glad, but I'm glad that you're not streaking off in the distance. It's still a really good race, really close, so we're set up for a good season. Yeah, well, 
we're wanting our main priority is to go to BSB later on this year. Um, I was meant to be riding the 450s again this season, but um, Sherlock Kawasaki, Craig, and his dad Roy um, messaged me and offered me the Cedric 6 for this year. And um, you can't turn down a free bike or that good an opportunity. So um, a big thanks to Sherlock's, and hopefully we can go down to BSB and prove a point down there. But Paul and Liam pushing me is just going to make me go even faster faster and push even harder um, what I need to then improve and then get quicker and quicker so when we go down to BSB we can hopefully run at the front and prove a point. Well done. Thank you. Can I say a big thanks to obviously Shiloh, Motorcycles, Prentice Coaches, um, Alan McIntosh, McIntosh Mini Bikes, uh, Kabuta Helmets, um, family, friends, sponsors, just everybody. Well done mate. Thank you. Paul, a good third place, a man I didn't even expect to see this year. Um, you kind of disappeared last year, then you were back again, then you were away again, but looks like we could have a full season. Yeah, we've been on and off, and then we decided to take a year out, but the racing started, so we had to go and get a bike. So we've only had that bike for three or four weeks now, so it's still work in progress. Once you get there, do you think you can take it to these guys and be winning races again consistently? Uh, I'd like to think so. We're still a second off the pace I set last year, so hopefully, but the bike's not quite there, but we should get it done. Good stuff, good luck. Perfect, cheers. Race number two for the Scottish Superstocks are about to head out on track and back on pole position, going through the laps in his head, as he always does, Lewis Rollo. He's going to be trying to make this four wins out of four, which is an incredible achievement if he manages to pull it off. It already is pretty incredible, considering you like that. I will head this direction. I'm going to speak to the man who, in my opinion, will hopefully be able to challenge him to that and uh, give us a good fight here. Number 30, Liam, the nearly man of this championship, I would say. If we can get it off the line, I think you can do it. What's the plan? Just not think about it? <laughs> yeah, well, I've just got to be more aggressive. Just just go for it from the start. I, I keep leaving it too late to make a pass, and then the back markers come, and uh, it gets a bit hectic. But it uh, looks like it's spitting a bit out there. Um, the rain does come on. I'm not sure if we're going to go out. I've got part British next weekend, so I need to think about keeping everything together for that, re that race meeting. For the confidence, it would be nice to take at least one win this weekend. Lewis is on a bit of a roll, and he's so young. He's so strong in the head. When he wins, he knows he can keep winning. But for you, you just need to overcome that little gap. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. With, uh, I'm struggling at the hairpin a bit. The triumph coming out of the corners isn't very good, and Lewis is so strong going in. So uh, to, I'm going to have to make a pass early and try and break him if I'm going to win it, really, to be honest. Let's see a good start. Cheers, thanks. There we go. I'll hand this one to Dennis and Duncan, and we'll see what happens in the second race of the day. Thanks for that, Joe Tanner. It's always good to hear from the guys at front. You can see Lewis Rollo going through his pre-race prep there, then sitting down, kind of doing the visualisation of the laps in the head and uh, before he gets in the bike and uh, getting getting zoned in there. Yeah, this going back to the, uh, the the qualifying from yesterday, Duncan. So this is actually good news for Callum Patterson. This puts him back onto the second row of the grid because, remember, he was on the floor. Has he got the, the bike uh, fixed, though? That's what we need to see. Is that Callum Patterson rolling up onto the grid? I guess yes. he's just behind Lewis Rollo hiding there just now. But also starting from the front row of the, of the grid. Keep an eye on young Callum Grigger because we, he's been doing the lap times, but he's not been able to get away yeah. off the line initially. But uh, if he gets a good start here, if he can follow the guys at the sharp end, Lewis Rollo and Paul McClung, and Liam Shelcott, these are the guys that have been setting the pace uh, across the three races so far, then uh, he's going to be in a good shout for a podium. So here we go. The Super Stocks get the green flag from the back. The eyes go up towards that Beetson's Building Supply Bridge. We see the bridge from the other side and get a quick flash from this side. The red lights go on and off and Bob Davis catches them with a quick light there. And has everybody made a good start? Is it going to be? No, it's going to be Chris Duncan who gets the whole shot past his teammate. In fact, no, he's not. Lewis Roller just lets the brakes off. In fact, probably didn't break for another good 20 yards after that and takes the lead as they go in towards Scotsman Paul McClung in second place. Chrissy Duncan, Callum Gregor. Let's pick up Liam Shelcock. Callum Patterson, Dennis, you picked up on him getting back on the second row. Look at Callum Gregor going past Chris Duncan round the outside of Butchers. That's a good manoeuvre. So, to be fair, you know, the, the top six guys here, Duncan, have all got the pedigree and the potential to win this race. Uh, and they've got the speed, but they've just got to get, make sure they get it all together uh, to make it happen. But down towards front, McClung already looking menacing and yeah. want to get past Lewis Rollo. Pops out from the slip screen as they come in towards the hairpin, but Lewis Rollo again skating that bike about in the back wheel and manages to get, well, he missed the apex a little bit that time, but didn't look like it cost him any speed or time. And Callum Grigger in third place. Liam Shelcock has now got past Chrissy Duncan. Up the main straight, tucked in behind the bubble. Six gear underneath the Beatson's bound supply bridge. Pop up, down a couple of gears. Tip the thing in on its side. Try and get to the apex with just a little bit of a bump there inside then. And then power it hard down the hill. Oh, McClung! 
McClungan so fast he had to almost set up mid corner. Yeah, Lewis Hall's a little bit wide through the top of Duffus Duncan, so that compromised his speed as he went through Leslie's, and I think that's why uh, McClung almost rolled into the back. But look, we were mentioning about young Callum on that Kakodi Kawasaki's McClung has a look at Lewis Hall at the inside and towards Clark Corner. It was side by side there, but Lewis Hall impressive. He just rolls it in there right across the front of Paul McClung, and I think McClung's going to be eager to get past on the run down to the hairpin on this lap. It looks like he's got a little bit more speed yep. than in the previous one. He's making tweaks to that bike all the time. Yeah, pops out the, they pop up from the bubble at exactly the same time. Then it's Lewis Rollo who takes the, the lead as they come out from the hairpin, but he probably did go a little bit hot into Duffus that last time. And Give me a freight, but we're back on board with Lewis. How many gears are you going down, Duffus, when you go into a, in a six? Are you going down two or are you going down three at the top? All depends on you know how, how your bike's set up. I would say probably normally two into the right, then they do a left at Les's here, then come oh, back and one into clung. third. Look at that. What a classy move from that young man there. Just drove it through the left hander, popped out from behind Lewis Rollo, and that was McClung's move there. I like that, Dennis. You're giving them a thumbs up for that as well. A really good move from the young man who's... Uh, just, just about to turn 19 so they're very young these yeah, guys I'm, I'm impressed with Callum Grigger like you say he's uh, in third place he's, he's going along with a leading duo at the moment and uh, the, the fastest man of the, the previous race is back there in fourth place and Liam Shelcock just can't close that gap at the moment he got past Chrissy Duncan but he can't seem to make any more inroads into this race so far yeah where did Liam Shelcock start that race from though he was a little bit further down the grid wasn't he yeah he's obviously going back to the, the qualifying of uh, yesterday Duncan so he was starting uh, further down the field but at the front, Paul McClung there clicking off, and he's a 52-0 straight away on that opening lap dunk. Yeah, he gets past him and puts up a good banker, and so Lewis Roll has now got a man in front of him to chase. He's not really had much of that this weekend, but Paul McClung has up the pace on that black R6 Yamaha. And I tell you, another man that's up to pace is Callum Gregor. Dennis was right in pointing out he is a man who has been doing the lap times, but maybe just been getting caught and bogged by a little bit of traffic at the start of the race and not getting away with these guys. That's one of the things in Ockell, if you get bogged at the beginning and you can't get away with the leaders and they get a couple of seconds on you, you can do the same lap times, but you're never going to never gonna pull them back. And Shellcook, though, looks like he's getting a bit racy on the back of Gregor. Callum Patterson uh, keeping it upright so far in this one. He's uh, in there in fifth place, but Paul McClung's got a decent advantage there. Probably, you know, For this particular class, he's got probably three quarters of a second, Duncan, as he comes up over the start-finish line as we're uh, looking at the back of Lewis Rollo. RST Leathers, yep. Yeah, yeah. Good good set of Leathers. You get them up in the country. Johnny Towers, is that? As uh, Shellcock goes up the inside, but not to be there. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, Callum Grigger still holding off Liam Shellcock behind as he comes through in towards the Scotsman section of the circuit before charging hard down towards Butchers. And these guys using all the curbs around the circuit. This is where they use the maximiser on the way in. And oh, and a big mistake there by McClure. Uh, oh, uh, Lewis yep, Rollo. Yep, Lewis Rollo go, did go wide there. I was watching Callum Gregor, who, who was up out of the seat as well. So Lewis Rollo makes, uh, makes a mistake there. He's uh, lost himself a lot of time. And, uh, but Callum Gregor as well, he was out with the seat and exit. That. And Shellcock's got two guys in the one lap there. And that's just given McClung a nice big banker of a lead as he comes in towards the apron. So Callum Gregor, uh, a little warning from the back of that Kawasaki. Yeah, well, I, I just caught, uh, just at the front, it looked like uh, young Lewis Solo went in a little bit deep and hit the uh, the hot dog curb well, on the was, exit the second at, part. I was looking at Callum Gregor. So. And you could see his exit line was completely wrong. But that's uh, given McClung a big advantage at the front. Obviously, Paul McClung won't know anything about this. Until he comes back around next time, maybe your mum and dad on the pit lane wall, he's, he might have a pit board to give him some more information. Yeah, dad Sam will probably be hanging out some sort of pit board there. That, that will be a sure thing as Liam Shellcock ahead of Callum Gregor. And it was just, uh, Callum Gregor just got launched out with the seat just a little bit there. That's aggressive through the Shellcock. Yeah, Shellcock made a bit of a mistake there, missed his apex as well. He, he went in slightly wrong, missed his exit point. As again, they bring it back towards the white line at the top of Clark Corner. And both exiting nicely, they're not going in too fast at all. They're getting it nice and smooth, but McClung is absolutely stretched away. And uh, let's see what happens at the conclusion of this race after the break. Welcome back to Knock Hill and we get the conclusion of this Super Stock 600 race which Paul McClung is leading handsomely as they go over the crest of the hill. Second place, Liam Shellcock, third place. Great to see Callum Grieger. Yeah, there was a lot going on on the uh, the previous lap, Duncan. Uh, you know, I, I caught Lewis Rollo making a big mistake and hitting the hot dog curb and he actually caught Callum Grieger almost high side himself out of the chicane. Uh, so a lot happening in one incident, but... Uh, the man to benefit from that, yeah, Liam Shellcock. Liam Shellcock back to the front, but... Incidentally, at the front, Paul McClung, with everything going on that's happening behind him, he's actually going faster and faster at the front, and uh, with his last lap there, a 51.6. Ooh, that's, uh, that's tricky fast, that is. That's freaky fast. Uh, heading towards the hairpin for Paul McClung. 
on the black number 49 bike. But you see it's ex Mark coming bike. Mark not racing this year. Uh, he went away to do a bit of car racing in a, in a legend. Uh, just everything clashed with his work, so he's still wanting to race something. But let's pick up Lewis Rollo ahead of Callum Patterson. But see fourth place on the, the road just now. And it's still looking as flamboyant as ever. In fact, he's in fifth oh, place, hang on, Liam Shelcock. Sorry, Dennis. Liam Shelcock walking away from the Trilly Bay Triumph at the hairpin there. The bike not in the middle of the road, but on the side of it. It's Chris Duncan <laughs> blacks it in <laughs> and almost goes too far. Duff is here, but Liam Shelcock just. Uh, I think we could see he's gathering his thoughts, Dennis. I, I was impressed with the style of Chrissy Duncan. I've never <laughs> seen him back it in like that, but I think that was just a small mistake, potentially in towards the top of Duffus. But he's ahead of Lewis Rollo at the moment, so he's got the uh, the advantage in that Sherlaw's battle because they are teammates. Great marshalling by Jamie Revels and his guys at the hairpin. The race director, Ian Forrest, will be keeping a good eye on what's going down there, but the marshals will have checked the track. They'll make sure that there's no fluid down, and the guys have wheeled that bike and got Lewis um, and Liam Shelcock checking him over on the inside. So great news that Liam got to walk away from that. So looked like that was just the high side Dennis uh, the famous on the power at the hairpin what was Lewis Roller doing there he was making that bike work for it, it almost a bit like Ben Wilson you know really aggressive in the corner you can see the bike moving about uh, but Lewis Roller just adapting to the system that, his speed is fast is that a compliment for a young Lewis yeah no no he's fast you know, I think it is I think when you're fast you're fast it doesn't matter what you're riding uh, I dare say he's got a brand new set of Scott Levers the same as Chris Duncan Darren Ross and the rest of the uh, the Sherlock's clan but uh, Maybe just not feeling comfortable yeah. in them just yet. <laughs> happy, to, happy to ride in the Aris T ones just now uh, as he learns the 600. But this man at the front is uh, pulling away and made a few changes from race one to race two and race three as he, as he goes along. And it really looks like it's working it well from the number 49 Yamaha. As we said earlier on, he's going to be 19 in a few few days or so. Lives just out the back of Edinburgh. And Paul McClung accelerates out the hip and past Liam Shelcock. The marshal's still just standing there making sure Liam's okay. Last lap flag flashes and floats in the breeze here and not killing this beautiful sunny day at the KMSC meeting. A couple of back markers who are about to go lap down. One on David Jackson on the Suzuki. Not many Suzukis in the race, then. Yeah, no, mainly uh, a lot of uh, Kawasaki's nowadays, Duncan. You know, these guys uh, changing between. You see uh, years of where it be Yamaha's yeah. all, all the way through, but a lot more uh, Kawasaki's out there. But look at this, he's catching up towards the back of the 21 bike. That's and David yeah. Jackson, like you say. Kyle Duncan, the next man up the road. Back in my day, it was all Hondas. Everybody had Hondas, but uh, it's amazing about changes. And look at that, he's gone, he's gone past two guys in the short Brabham incline, as uh, Gary Stagg calls that back straight there, and empowers it round through Hislops towards the hairpin. We're still looking at that last lap flag. We'll see Paul McClung on the left of your screen coming. In fact, we pick him up at the hairpin cam. He does a little bit of showboating on the a bit of the back brake. And it's been a great ride for Paul McClung up towards the checker flag. A well-deserved victory. And he walked away from him that time. Checker flag wraps itself up. It's a bit of a pull, but it's a win for Paul McClung. Yeah, for sure. Well-deserved victory by Paul McClung in that one. Be interested if he's here for the uh, the British Superbike round at the beginning of July. Second place looks like goes to young Callum Yeah, Brigler, that's so a good result for the Kirkcaldy uh, Kawasaki, man. He'll be absolutely over the moon with that one. And uh, is it going to be Chrissy Duncan or Lewis Rollo that got that final podium position? We'll just have to see. Uh, I think it's pretty tight at the line. Yeah, it looks like Chris Duncan's got that, as we see on the screen. They're in Lewis Rollo, Callum Patterson, Ewan Gray. I'm still smiling about Chris Duncan backing it in from 150 <laughs> metres towards the first corner. Yeah, so. imagine to keep it up right. Angus Mearns in seventh ahead of Jody Chalk, Peter Duncan and Kyle Duncan, your top ten. Uh, Scottish Championship stuff, let's hand it to Joe Tanner. Callum, second place, fantastic result. Um, a little bit fortunate with some other people having some issues, but the pace is definitely there. Yeah, the pace is very, very fast. I've, I've had I've had this, the, the lap times all weekend, just haven't been struggling with my starts and it's with certain problems with the bike suspension, but everything uh, that's sorted now. Kodi Kawasaki, my dad, Papa John, everybody who's helped me, just have done a fantastic job. You're one of the young guys in this class. Um, there's a couple of these youngsters that have come into this and are right at the sharp end. Can we see you with a championship challenge this year? Uh, I'm sure I'll be definitely trying my best out there. Um, I'm sure it'll be a very, very tough year considering the, the job I've gave myself from my eighth place yesterday in the Scottish race. But we, we're going to try our hardest and hopefully we will be right up there to have a, a grab at the end of the year. Well done. Thank you very much. Paul, there's that win that we spoke about earlier on. Um, some problems for Lewis and a bigger problem for Liam there at the end. Yeah, we've, we've got more pace this morning than what we have ever. Well, apart from last season, but we found something with the bike that's made me more comfortable on it. Uh, I didn't feel like I was pushing that hard there in that race, and I had the pace, so see what comes with the next one. It almost looked as if Lewis, um, Liam, sorry, was kind of waiting, he was sticking with you, and it looked like he was planning something, then down he went at the hairpin. Yeah, i never seen it, I don't know what's happened to him, but it's like he's got on it too early, and it's just high side and I'm off, but, but we're all pushing on, it can happen to any of us, so I hope he's all right. Well done. Perfect, cheers.
Third place, uh, keeping the Sherlaws bikes on the podium with Lewis's wee excursion there, but it's something you benefited from. Uh, we, but, yeah, I had a bit of problems there, and I had a close moment of hairpin and a run on the top of Duffus, so kind of evened itself out like, but I gave it all there, but it's a big shout out to Sherlaws and all my sponsors, Cameron Autotech, Autocare Turriff. Uh, Peter's printing design and Rondo for buying my set of tyres for this weekend. You're one of the more experienced guys I'm going to call you now in this class. We've got a couple of young kids basically that have come in and just been blindingly fast straight away. Well, a lot of them have been racing longer than me. I'm just older than them, Mike, but I'm not any wiser, I don't think. <laughs> well done. All right, cheers, boys. Thank you. Liam, we catch up with you after the second super stock race of the day, but not under the circumstances that we all imagined on the podium. I had you for the winner. It looked like you were just waiting, but at the hairpin it all went a bit pear-shaped. Yeah, I got a bit of a bad start and uh, gave a bit of myself a bit of work to do, but Lewis had an issue around uh, the chicane and ran on, so I managed to get into second past Callum. And uh, I think I was just trying a bit too hard to catch Paul up in, in one lap and got a bit happy on the throttle and spat myself off. I noticed the girl jumped the crash helmet. Uh, yeah, that's not a great situation, but bike-wise, how are we looking? Uh, the, the rear wheel's flat, but um, I mean, apart from that, it's, it's all superficial, really. should be able to fix it. Good stuff. Unlucky. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. The final 600 Superstock race of the day is almost ready to head out on track. Lewis Rollo. I'm going to have a quick chat with him. Lewis, I know you like to concentrate before the race, but we'll uh, interrupt you anyway and talk about the previous one. I thought perhaps you were a man that was going to win all the races, but a mistake, I think, out of chicane. Yeah, well, um, we had a few technical problems there, and um, coming through the chicane, the bike got a bit unsettled, and I hit the hot dog on the inside and ran wide onto the gravel, but managed to keep the bike upright, join back on the track and get a force, so points are good and um, at least the bike's on one bit, so we were obviously disappointed that we never won, but we're happy that our time's improved there and um, that we stayed on, so now nah, we just look forward to this one and get our head down. Well, like you say, at least you didn't drop the bike, it could have been a lot worse, it's still a really good start. Yeah, I know, well... Um, Top five's good, eh, but uh, top three would be even better, and a win is just top notch. Eh? So we'll push again in this race and see what we can do. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh, I'll speak to the man who won, uh, who benefited from that, but maybe he would have won anyway because he was happier with the bike. And he's getting his helmet done up here. We'll give him a second. He's getting taped up. It's Paul McLung, the winner of the previous race on the number 49 machine. There he goes. It's like it's like when you see kids getting there. What, what's with the? Have you got a sore hand? Nah, nah. nah uh, there's a wee magnet bit on it, but it pings off and it starts slapping me about, so it's there. So you get it all taped up. Um, I was just speaking to Lewis there. He made that mistake in the previous race. I said you benefited from it, but maybe you would have won anyway. But I think we're about to find out. Yeah, we'll find out. I'm not saying anything, but our pace was good in that last race, so we'll see. Give us a good race. There we go. I'll hand this one to Dennis and Duncan for the final 600 Superstock race of the day. Thank you very much, Joe Tanner. Great to hear from the guys there. And uh, shame for Liam. Liam Shellcott. Better work to do on that Trail Bay Triumph 675. But it's Paul McClung, the man on form right now. And Callum Gregor. Great to see Callum get away with the leaders at the front there and get a bit of a result under his belt. McClung rolls up onto the grid underneath a, a bit of a black cloud there, ominous black cloud, but that doesn't look like it's going to come too much. As you can see, there's like craters of blue sky either side of that. Uh, Chris Duncan also in the front of the grid, and here comes Callum Grigger on Nelly's Kirkcaldy Kawasaki, yeah. taking over the Kirkcaldy Kawasaki ride from uh, the retiring Roy Houston. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with, with, with young Callum. He's doing a good job for the Kirkcaldy Kawasaki team and uh, an outfit. Well, he comes from good stock as well. Gordon Grigger uh, from uh, from way back in the day, and uh, and also Mark Grigger as well. So uh, there you go. Peter Duncan, we're on board with. This is the nervy part of the start, isn't it, Dennis? Get yourself into gear. Eyes on the lights. Bob Davis has got his finger on the button. Let's see how long he holds them. For the red lights are on. Red lights are off, and that was quite a long hold. The revs are up for quite a long time, but McClung just drives away from everybody. It looks like he's going to have the lead, and Chris Duncan's going to have second place. Callum Gregor tucks across the front of him, actually. That's a, that's a brave, good, brave move from Callum Gregor as we go down through Leslie's and towards Scotsman. Peter Duncan goes up the inside, but the leader at the front is Paul McClung, and two guys have already gapped the rest of the field and are heading up 
towards the chicane just now. You can see the the varying contrast in lines there. Duncan on that opening up, Callum Grigger there, just ahead of Ewan Gray and Angus Mearns right behind, ahead of Jody Chalk as well. And uh, Jody Chalk, normally one that we see getting really good starts in, in the past and, and leading Superstock 600 races, uh, Duncan. But good to see it out there doing a good job so far. Don't spy Liam Shellcock out there, do you? No, I was just trying to spot to see if he made it to the uh, the rear of the grid because he would have to be starting in last place. Maybe he's done the sight lap and, and pulled back in, but uh, we're not overly sure. You can definitely see that the dark clouds as they run into the hairpin are on board Peter Duncan and uh, staying down at the back of, I think, it was like, uh, Kyle Duncan possibly ahead of him. I'll take your word for it, Dennis. Looking back at Lewis Roll there, trying to get a visual on him as they go over the top of Duffy Step just now. Ewan Gray, there's a man that really impresses us. This man going through the left hand on the older style Kawasaki. Yeah, no, definitely uh, doing a, a good job. Looking at Callum Patterson again, he's been on the floor earlier on today, Duncan, and, and back out there racing hard. He's right in the back of young Chris Duncan. And uh, young Chris, he's going to be feeling tired. He's been competing in all the soup bike club and races supported by Sherlaws. He's riding a Sherlaws bike here in the Superstock 600 class. And uh, he's done a lot of racing this weekend, but it's also going to be keeping him uh, sharp. But he'll be, he'll be feeling at the end of today. Lewis Rollo, no, in the meantime, he wants to get the better of Paul McClung. And these guys are not going slow. The both are the 52-0 on the uh, the first flying lap. Yeah, and I'll, impressive stuff. I wonder if they've done anything to try and make that bike a bit more user-friendly on the brakes and the airport. I wonder if Alan McIntosh has just tried to tune young Lewis a little bit better because uh, he was having some big, big, massive, monumental moments, you could say, going into the airpin. But uh, join us after the break for the conclusion of this Super Stock 600 race. Welcome back as we join the guys running in towards the top. Of the, obviously, some of the guys towards the rear of the field there. Peter Duncan and Michael Huskisson. Correct, that's the well spotted there, Duncan, as these guys come in through. We're already about halfway distance in this race, and Lewis Rollo, he's looking at the, the back wheel of Paul McClung as we look out of the commentary box window, and uh, he's uh, he's trying everything he possibly can to try and find a way through, but McClung, the second half of, the, of this meeting, Duncan, is more and more confident all the time. Yeah, thankfully our Windy, win, windy Wilson uh, weather report has, uh, has worked out just fine and that black cloud hasn't burst above us as we see the guys going over the crest of the hill just now. But McClung is leading the way into second place, Lewis Rollo. That's been some ride from that young man. Yeah, and obviously uh, young Callum Grigger there as well. He's doing a good job. He's, he's out there. He's right on the back wheel. He's learning. And, and we knew he had the speed earlier on because he was doing the lap times on his own. Now he's with the guys. He's not done over three or four attempts of a second off. He's on their pace and uh, he's, he's only going to get stronger and stronger. It's a shame that Liam Shellcock isn't out there. Uh, we hope that he gets himself fixed up and ready for Alton yeah. Park BSB uh, at the weekend. Uh, but these guys are again heading out of Clark Corner down towards a hairpin and it's McClung leading away from Lewis Roller at the moment yeah. and yeah, Lewis Roller looking menacing up the inside Lewis up the inside in the brakes gets that thing back down and scrubs his speed off to the apex and look at that right on at the apex here Dennis Hobbs nodding away here he liked that one McClung's fighting back on the inside as they power up the main straight Callum Grigger's thinking go on boys take yourself off the track give me a win as we come underneath the Beatsons Bridge, but now it's a good move from Lewis look at the thing tying itself in knots as he's still heading towards the apex uh, that's reminiscent of uh, superstar stuff. That as McClung goes back up the inside at the Scotsman. That's a block pass if you've he, ever seen it. Yeah, like he, that. He has got that one. So he's, he's pulled that one earlier in the day as well, hasn't he, Duncan? I think it was the last race yes. he managed to do that. And it uh, definitely looks uh, like he's got that part of the circuit nailed. Lucio is a little bit wider as it goes through Duffus. I think he's not more slaps, but he actually misses the bump. If you notice, there's a little bump just at the top. McClung runs across it and uh, Lewis Lowe, uh, chooses to go slightly wide of it but then that affects his left at the bottom of the hill it makes him a little bit tighter and doesn't carry the speed through as does McClung ahead of him he's not going to go around outside of Paul McClung that is for sure Paul McClung doing a little bit of defending on the way and they look at that menacing black cloud but we're still baked in sunshine as we come up the main street listen to that little Kawasaki go other levers are available as a charge in towards the top of <laughs> Duffus. I like that one, yes. You're a good friend, Jimmy Ed, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. We'll Dennis Hobbs discount. <laughs> Four and a half finger discount. So here we go. And uh, Paul McClung, you can see there, he, definitely a slight difference in line, and he's pulled a couple of bike limbs over Lewis Solo, but this is where young Callum Grigger should be strong. He gets a good exit out of the top of the Arnold Clark chicane, we've noticed on previous laps on the road towards Clark Corner. Yeah, through Clark Corner, Paul McClung, great little style on Paul McClung, you know, he's, he's, he's an extremely fit young chap, he does a lot of work in it, plays a lot of rugby, 
And you've got to be fit to ride these 600s very quickly around here, Dennis, as you're agreeing with that nodding away there as we get onto the brakes with the hairpin. Callum Gregor just, uh, I don't know if he's dropping off the back or if he made a wee mistake on that last lap, but he's, uh, he's still with these guys at the front, which uh, Brian Nelson nearly will be delighted from Krakodi Kawasaki with that. Yeah, I'm sure it was four laps to go on the pit board there. I was just trying to pick I'm that one over the back. That. And uh, these, guys, the <laughs> these guys all doing 52 ones on the last lap, so the pace is hot every single lap and uh, they say they'll, they're only young kids Lewis Rollo is learning all the time Paul McClung's been here before and done it uh, but obviously he's managing to get a new bike and he's getting quicker and quicker all the time but young Calm as well also moving up to the 600 category getting faster and faster as look at you and Graham Angus Mearns yep from, uh, from the youngsters at the front we come back to Angus Mearns who is definitely the veteran of the class I'm not going to tag you and Gray with any sort of bad age uh, bracket there up the back street Ewan Gray holding off a very very experienced man in Angus Mearns as they come through the top of Clark Corner but uh, laps to go ticking off as Dennis said rightfully so four laps to go he reckoned last time round as I say I couldn't see the pit board on the pit wall never mind what was written on it Jodie Chalk is uh, kind of in the middle of no kind of no women's land you could say there she's uh, not got much in the way of company to be going round here with but she's still setting pretty good lap times we looked in 54-4 one of the fastest laps that Jodie's pulled this weekend over the crest hill, clicking off another couple of laps. Here we go. Ewan Gray uh, still managing to hold off uh, the ever advancing Angus Merns over that bump that Dennis talks about at the apex. Duff is drive it hard through the left hander. And uh, let's have a look at lap times for these two guys then. Yeah, just looking further down the field there. Ewan Gray and Angus Merns, both 53.6. So pretty impressive stuff. Look at that. The uh, contrasting lines there as we go through yeah, the top of the like Arnold Clark chicane. And it looks like it's spread out again, but back at the front, don't just notice now going from the tower that uh, it's going to be uh, McClung and Rollo because it's uh, Young Calm's dropped off him maybe a second off the back of these guys now as they charge down towards a hairpin. And this is still the Ewan Gray Angus Mearns battle, and uh, we're going to have two laps to go pretty shortly. You see the front of that thing pushing right into the ground there, really, really hard on the brakes, and then he, he fires out the corner. He's looking good on that big Ewan Gray. He could be a force to be reckoned if he gets something else, but look at that up the inside of one of the back markers, and you can just see Paul McClung just ahead there over the shoulder of Lewis Rollo as he goes through this again. Lewis Rollo extremely brave and almost getting caught there now. Has that given McClung a big enough gap there, Dennis? I think that's... Uh, Is that the race? It could well be, but the last lap round was the fastest lap for both guys at the sharp end. 52-0 by McClung and Lewis Rollo 51.9, so he's in the area where he wanted to be, and it's going to be the last lap flag waiting for these guys as they come out of the hairpin, don't yeah, let's see what happens on this next lap McClung being a bit defensive on the way in this time picks the Yamaha up and squirts it out of the corner up towards what is the yellow and black cross the last lap flag that little back marker incident that the chicane might have just cost him but there's more back markers to be to be there dealt with on this lap look at McClung still trying to slow that thing down head <laughs> to the apex it here. looked like he went slightly wide that time and uh, let's see if Lewis Roller can close up towards the back and this uh, slow ride ahead of him is going to be uh, yeah. compromising at the chicane that's Mike, uh, Michael Hoskis in there as they go through the Arnold Clutch game McClung catches him almost perfectly there you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't have timed that yeah, any better as does Lewis Rollo Michael doing a cracking job there not getting flustered by the guys come back stick to your racing line best thing to do and it's on towards the open one other back marker and Dennis you'll try and pick up a number on that for me uh, as they come in towards the hairpin yeah, McClung Kyle Duncan that's just about to go under the caution the last lap of the hairpin bit of defending but it's, uh, it's not needing to be done really for uh, for uh, Paul McClung there as he come out of the hairpin up towards checker flag Lewis Rowe tries right to the end of the race but it's a win for Paul McClung Another fine second place for Lewis Rollo. Comes up alongside Paul and Callum Gregor getting a good third there. You know what uh, Lewis Rollo's like. He'll be disappointed that he never won on that shell or support machine, but he's into the 51s again. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing that's going to be pleasing for him. But it is Paul McClung, Lewis Rollo, and Callum Gregor are your top three from Christopher Duncan, Callum Patterson, and Angus Mearns. Jody Chalk, Ewan Gray, Peter Duncan, Kyle Duncan. Michael Huskisson and Chris Eastwood down in 12. So let's hand back down to Joe Tanner for a bit of a recap and let's hear what the guys have got to say about that cracking Superstock 600 race here at Knock Hill today. Lewis, second place in the final Super Stock 600 race of the day. And what I love to see is the fact you've had a great race, you're second place, but you're absolutely distraught and upset. And it's good to see because you want to be winning. Yeah, well, um, 
The first race today went to plan, obviously winning it. Then the second race um, had a few technical problems and ran on at uh, the chicane, but uh, Paul's pace in the second race was just unreal and he carried it on in the third race there. And um, I started fourth on the grid, got up to third and then closed up on Paul and Callum um, and then had a wee ding-dong with Paul for a bit. But just the pace he was setting and how he leaps at the corners was just... Need to make some improvements to get them the next time, but happy with a podium and it's points on the table, so all in all, a brilliant weekend. Overall, a stunning weekend, and like you said yourself, you need these quick guys to be pushing you along. Uh, last year, Paul's pace was that, if not the same, or slightly better than the BSB pace. So you've got to be happy, and you can use them to learn from. Uh, well, Paul, obviously, last year he was doing low 50 um, ones, so he's not far away from the BSB lap record. So, to be honest, he's probably the best person to be out on the track with. And the experience he's got racing as well is just brilliant. And um, he's such a good rider. And me and him are friends on the track and off the track, even though we have a wee ding dong. But, and uh, that nah, was good. And obviously, him pushing me, me pushing him is just going to um, make us both improve and get better well done great weekend thank you paul our final Superstock 600 race winner and uh, you're just a young guy and you're in my memory fairly new to this class but it feels like you're the senior guy who's just handed out the spanking <laughs> yeah yeah well i'm i'm not the oldest in the class but i'm one of the youngest but we lewis is only what 15 He's done so quick this weekend. Yeah. I mean, he started the weekend on an absolute flyer, win, win, win. But I can see a really good championship battle between you two. Ah, uh, well, our bike wasn't the best at the start of the weekend, but we've got it fixed a wee bit now. But Lewis is on it, 51s. He's 15 year old, so but we'll need to step our game up. He was complimentary uh, of your exit speed. He was talking about the exit of the corners is where he says he needs to improve on you. Yeah, we've moved the bike about, so I'm comfortable coming out the corners and going into the corners now. So. Now we just need to work on our mid pace through the corner and we'll be on it, but it should be good. Well done. Cheers, thanks. Callum, uh, it's the young kids now in this class. You're just 16, Lewis is even younger, and Paul, who's the experienced guy, he's in his teens as well. I mean, what's going on? You guys are flying. Uh, no, I think it's just because we don't have work on Monday morning, to be <laughs> honest. No, but um, it was a great race there. Both the boys are, are obviously on it. Um, it made a huge change again to the suspension from the previous race. It's probably made it a little bit worse, so we can't really keep up with the boys uh, as well as we could in the first one. But I have to give it to them. Both of them are riding absolutely fantastic. And You're in a great position to be learning as well. Paul's, like I said, the experienced guy. He's done the lap times before. Lewis is the young guy who's coming on. And you're right there. You're not getting dropped to the point where you can't see them. You're going with them. Yeah, going with them for for as long as I can, just for as long as the bike. Both their bikes are just a little bit quicker than mine. Just honestly, I can't thank the boys at Kirkcaldy Kawasaki, Brian, Dad, everyone. Just thank you very much. Great job, well done. We're looking forward to seeing what you can do for the rest of the year. I'm sure that will be not disappointing. Well done. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for from the 600 Super Stocks. But what great action we've seen all day long, and I can see a great championship battle developing between the young Lewis Rollo, who's been absolutely stunning on his debut, and Paul McLung, who looks like the experienced guy in this class now, Callum Gregor as well, right up the sharp end. Please tune in next time where I'm sure we'll do plenty more high-speed two-wheeled action.